Hey everybody, Thomas here. Another wonderfully hot day out here on the farm, on the mill. So this is a friend of mine's cherry. And I was actually talking to another one of my friends the other day about the importance of a wide mill. So my buddy, who I got this, this cherry log on, the log on the wheel here for, he wanted some curved cuts, about two inches thick of cherry. He makes uh, rocking horses, and he makes spoons, he makes all sorts of things, but he has some really unique cuts. So, as it is right now, I don't have the exact measurements, I'll, I'll give some rough approximations here. It's about 24 inches out to here. Now this log right here is probably only about 14 inch diameter, so nearly... Yeah, there's about eight inches right here of curve of how it comes out and everything. So, on a smaller mill, this would be a very difficult log to cut. But due to the 32 inch wide cut on this, you know, I'm able to put something that's a little bit uh, unique looking, which is something that sells a lot. So, if people are doing river tables or, or whatnot, they want some crazy looking stuff. So, having that ability to cut wider is awesome. Also the orientation of the log is very important when you put it on the mill. The way I have this log oriented right now is each of the I guess peaks if you'll call it, this being the valley here, are up against the log stops on that side. If you had it a little bit offset then you'd have issues with your head not making clearance past those. So you make sure if you cut the log to match what you're your log stops are, that's convenient, otherwise I just randomly cut things and it is what it is. Next I'm actually going to flip this log over, I've already got my reference cut on top here, so by flipping it over I won't really have to use my log dog on this side to stabilize it because I'll have that flat edge, but I will only have one point of contact right here on the peak on, on this side of the log. So. What I may have to do is shift it down just slightly, but you want to make sure you don't shift it enough where this portion extends beyond the log stops. So it's kind of a, a puzzle jigsaw to an extent <clears throat> until you get the log perfectly on there. So I think the next best thing to do is let's turn this log over and we'll see how that goes. It's also 90 degrees right now. So, pretty nice. Nice nice weather to be doing this in. Also, this mill here is a mechanical log stop, so all of them move at once. So in this situation right here, my log stop is up against the wood, so I actually have to move the log over before I can lift it up. And on this side. And of course I've got to the point where the log wants to teeter on me, which is awesome. There we go. I'm going to bring these all the way up, turn the log 180. I've got a red wasp that is hanging out on the side of my mill. So if I get stung, I'll try not to swear too much. When you're doing these custom cuts, though, take your time. There's no, there's no need to rush. You rush, then you start breaking equipment fingers, whatever else. Again, if you're interested in this can't hook, got it from Cook Sawmill manufacturer. It is a beast of a can't. And it looks like I'm going to be pretty good right there. Kind of. So i got to bring my log stops below the log, of course, then you'll end up hitting them if you don't. That's no fun. Knock on wood. I haven't done it on this mill, but I have done it in the past on some other mills. I've got a mess out here right now. I'm very busy with work. In fact, yesterday I put on Lieutenant Commander, so I'm happy about that. I think uh, what's going to be my Lieutenant Commander present to myself. Probably won't be to myself. It's probably going to be 
something for my wife. I need to get her like a a, a side by side or something like that. But we'll see. And then you just kind of manhandle the, the sucker down there until you get where you want it. I want to try to keep this this log portion right here on the bed. Help with the uh, prevent the log from going up. She's up against the dog, well, the little dog thing on the bottom here. So when I had this log on here, whoo, firing son of a gun, no bueno, little turd nuggets. So it might teeter on me a little bit, but this is a pretty heavy cherry log. Well, I think it's a. Uh, Safe to say it's going to stay where it's going to stay. I'm not going to worry about the log stop on this side. You may see the log move a little bit, but it should be good. I'm going to cut down two inches. I got some rotten spots and it's full of freaking fire ants. Aim for that. The middle is warm. Don't think I'm crazy. I'm just going to crank it up and get into it. Hopefully, this red wasp leaves me alone. He doesn't look too, he's a big one too. All right. how that blade sliced through that curved piece of wood. This next cut should get rid of all this soft spots, hopefully some of those took the fire ants. Oh, good time getting sawdust in my ear muscles. It's awesome. <laughs> it didn't move on me, which is good. So I'll do one more cut. It should be pretty loud and then uh, see what we got.
so those little red devils kept on biting me down the whole length of that mill. So I probably have another 10 or so bites on me. That was awesome. But what I do have in return is some beautiful wood. So can't be that upset. Yep, it is pretty. I'm going to see if I can turn this sucker over. Ain't that cool. Imagine making that into like a wide shape or something. That's pretty. Okay, here you are. That's pretty. So, hopefully that helps out a little bit on some uh, reasons why you should get a wide cut mill. Let's do some pretty cuts like this. And then, uh, that's one thing, you know, on a wide cut mill, you can cut small stuff. Like thin or small diameter. What you can't cut is wide. So, always get more than what you want. Goes like with anything, like if you build a shop, you know, you may build a 24 by 24 shop and then, you know, you finish building the shop and then you wish you built it 50 by 50. So, <laughs> go big or go home, I think, would be my motto there. Let's see if I can get this sucker on there without any more ant bites. They are everywhere. Oh my goodness, this is no bueno. So I'm actually taking this to my buddy who's 50th anniversary is today. While I'm there, I might, might as well drop off some wood. And I'm going to try my darndest. I've got two hours. I'm going to try my darndest to make a Tennessee, well not Tennessee, a, a Mississippi cutout for him and his wife. Fantastic folks. Uh, Mr. Robert has uh, shown me a whole lot about things in a sawmill, him being a sawyer for 20 plus years. But, uh, Man, this log is absolutely filled with fire ants. I'll show you a little close up of these suckers. Ain't that something else? I'm just coming on out. But, I don't even want to sweep my hand across there. <laughs> hey, look at this. This is why I like cherry. It's, uh, you know, beautiful grain. It's it's pretty hard when you're working it and everything. Like it it you know, it's, it's not something that's going to dent too terribly easy, but uh, it is pretty. And if you've been following that giant cherry that I cut, I'm in the process of making a table for inside of our house. I've already got it in there. I air dried it. Well, I guess it's been two months now. And then um, after air drying it for a little bit. Put it into the house. I'm using the house as my kiln. Uh, I was very fortunate it didn't have any bugs or anything in it. But it is on some metal legs. The piece that I chose is about 22 inches wide. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm very happy with it. And I hopefully will have some videos where I start showing some woodworking stuff. But the problem is, is uh, I'm so busy. I very rarely have time to actually do woodworking projects. I just cut the raw wood. But uh, you know, 1400 mil, she's been doing great. Tractor's been doing great. I think I'm up to 88 hours on the, maybe it's 88, nine hours on the tractor, 86 hours on the mill. The mill's been doing phenomenal. Um, I'm actually trying to convince my dad right now that he needs to pop up to a, say, a 2000 series. I would actually like to get the 2000 series, but however, in the job that I'm currently in, I'm probably going to have to go to Washington, D.C. next. But I'm still going to bring all my stuff with me, so, you know, see if I can cut wood up there and try to capitalize on some type of market as well in my spare time. But, again, hope this is beneficial. Just remember, if you're cutting these crazy logs, the way I do it is I will put my extreme ends that are bowed out towards the dogs first, the log stops, excuse me, and then the next cut I'll do for the, the top of the... The peak, if you want to call it, if it's in the middle, will be up against the log stops. All right, y'all have a good one, and uh, we'll see you around.